Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. Got a multitude of subjects to cover. Hopefully the audio is working better for you guys as well today. I think it had switched to the camera audio is what happened. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Iran-Saudi Saudi Arabia agreement. We're going to be talking about Xi Jinping being re-elected for the third term. Uh, we're going to be looking at Ehud Barak, the former Israeli prime minister. What he is saying, the shocking statements from the former Israeli prime minister, Minister talking about pogroms being done against the Palestinians. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, there's the issue about less women in political arena in Israel. That's declining, uh, no doubt about it. U.S. Iran war plan and the situation with Russia, hypersonic missiles being fired into Ukraine as everything steps and heats up over in that part of the world. Let's get started right now. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching, of course, Israeli News Live. We are on March the, excuse me, March the 10th, 2023. And, uh, and I'm actually, I think I'm going to be loading a little video up, uh, more of a testimonial. Speaking about testimonies, I want to increase faith for individuals there over on Danoon Institute, our uh, teaching channel today. So definitely check that out as well. And, um, and I do have another video I need to load for Patreon. I'll try to do that later this evening. Uh, been have a lot of issues going on, friends. So please keep uh, keep us in prayer here. Uh, it is certainly uh, an attack of the enemy. Uh, let's get right into it. Sputnik News reporting, as many other outlets are, Iran and Saudi Arabia have agreed to restore diplomatic relationship there. Uh, They're getting ready to implement that relationship. And what does that mean for Israel? Well, that means that Israel would not be allowed to use Saudi airspace to launch an attack on Iran. <clears throat> you know, by the way, the United States has a great relationship with Saudi Arabia. They were able to use the airspace for Saudi Arabia to launch its attack on Iraq when the Gulf War began. Uh, but this situation here, and of course, it wouldn't just be a war uh, with Israel uh, going against Iran. It'd be Israel and the United States in a war against Iran. But this new agreement is going to create a major problem for Israel in that particular war. And uh, that's going to require Israel then firing weapons over its airspace instead. Don't know how that's going to go over with Saudi Arabia either. Uh, I do know that Netanyahu had met with uh, the Jordanian uh, uh, Prime Minister or, or King Jordanian King, sorry, and uh, how that uh, they had met, and it was the discussion was about using their airspace uh, in a war against Iran to be prepared for that. There are talks coming up about that. I'll actually be speaking more in depth about this issue over on Patreon, in fact, tonight, uh, because I am dealing with intel information about this very subject. Uh, so this is a very troubling thing to begin with. Also, uh, Xi Jinping being reelected as the Chinese president. He's also been involved in the negotiations uh, of, with Iran uh, with this nuclear deal, by the way. With a, that, that's another thing, too. The Saudis are wanting to be able to, to, to create nuclear reactors for civilian purposes. And uh, although Israel has always had a fairly, fairly good relationship with Saudi Arabia, this is a concerning thing for Israel, uh, that both the, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the nuclear reactors as well as uh, the relationship between Iran and uh, that of Saudi Arabia. But you got to remember, I've always said the BRICS, uh, the BRICS movement, I believe, is part of that New World Order agenda. And we've seen both Saudi Arabia and Egypt have joined the BRICS, uh, BRICS uh, group of nations there. They are rapidly headed to a New World Order. Don't kid yourself. Uh, even though the Israel may say act like they're all freaked out about this deal with Saudi Arabia and Iran, Israel, too, secretly is part of the BRICS nation. They're going to be the head of the New World Order. So although that's not been announced yet, that's all been secretly and clandestinely done. Nonetheless, it's still happening. Uh, I want to go also to here to Ehud Barak. He is the former uh, prime minister of Israel. And in this interesting interview with CNBC, I want you to listen. He does speak English. so I want you to listen carefully to what he says there. Um, and uh, uh, it is it, it blew me away that... He had the courage to actually stand. And he, he did take a balance in this. 
He mentions that there are terrorists within the Palestinian organization that needs to be dealt with. But he also spoke about the Israeli right-wing government is creating a pogroms program, likening that to what happened to the Jewish people against the Palestinians, and is going to incite more violence. So really, I, I, I have to say my hat's off to Ehud Barak for, for actually making a stand for the Palestinian people. Let's listen in. He's completely reluctant to face the uh, Palestinian issue. The Israeli government, the President Israel. One second there. I don't know if the volume, yes, 100%. So uh, uh, hopefully you guys will be able to hear it. I'll try to up this in the editing process. The government depends entirely on messianic, nationalistic, extreme uh, right-wingers, which are openly talking about repeating pogroms against Palestinians in the territories. This is devastating. This is disgusting, as the State Department uh, officials said recently about a statement made by the Israeli finance minister. I mean, we are moving forward rapidly into a new intifada, into a new violent terrorist confrontation with Palestinians. And I must say that while there is no question that there are terrorists among the Palestinians which must be uh, coped with uh, brutally by our security forces. They, uh, there are uh, factors within Israel which are contributing uh, to uh, the uh, escalation of this violent uh, spirit within uh, between us and the Palestinians. So. Uh, I think that this is something. I'll pause it right there and I'll try to remember to load the link in there. I want to thank again Sister Rosa for sending that to me. It just was an amazing find that she did there. Uh, also, the Jerusalem Post, where are all the women in Israeli politics? But, you know, go ahead, let me just go back though to Ehud Barak again. His, uh, his uh, statement here that the it's a messianic right wing government. That's critical, critical that you recognize his verbiage in this. When he says messianic, the, the orthodox teaching of the coming of the Messiah is a two Messiah. One brings about war and destroys all of Israel's enemies. The other Messiah brings about the peace, the Mashiach David and the Mashiach uh, Yosef. Mashiach David is the war Messiah. They liken Donald Trump to that Messiah there. And the rabbis have likened Netanyahu to the Messiah of Joseph. So oddly enough, if that be the case, Trump is definitely going to come back into power. Netanyahu's already come back into power. I know that within the intelligence community in Washington, D.C., they have said to me that they fear that if Netanyahu and Trump are both back in power, it'll be like the two witnesses of Revelation 11. So, friends, we're in a very serious situation in what this prime, former prime minister uh, Mr. Ehud Barak is saying cannot be underestimated of the seriousness of the consequences for the rest of the world moving forward. <clears throat> Let's go on. And, and, and well, you know what? I'd even have to say, with that being stated there, now let's go back and look at that Iran situation, the Iran-Saudi Arabia agreement. And then not only that, Israel planning to do a preemptive strike on uh, on Iran. That is another thing that lays in the balance right here. The U.S. has Iran's war plan media, uh, according to uh, RT. They're talking about how that Donald Trump created this war plan. There again, the Mashiach bin David. This is the way they have portrayed Donald Trump, that he is the Davidic Messiah who brings about the war against Israel's enemies, in this case here, specifically Iran. And Biden has actually been utilizing that war plan to, to create the drills that are going on between Israel and that of the United States. So we are on the verge of yet another front. As I've said to you before, there are going to be three fronts. Uh, I know that Mike was saying on with Paul Begley that there are 10. 
uh, fronts. And I'm sure that he's no doubt he's right. There's probably several smaller fronts that are going to break out in the world, including in South America. Uh, uh, the, and, and I do, <clears throat> I will tell you this as well. There's going to be a Japanese front, not that we'll be involved with that directly, a Taiwanese front. There's going to be a Philippines front. Uh, you know, China is going to challenge the hegemony of the United States throughout the entire Middle East. So when Mike talks about 10 fronts, I already know what he's talking about. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty wild to even think about that. All right. So yeah, so there is a war being planned already. All right. Now, dropping back into Ukraine, Russia fires hypersonic missiles in Ukraine. That was the uh, Kinshal, which is in English, the dagger, as RT translates that for us here. I believe there were eight hypersonic missiles used in this war front. And there is a great concern that there's going to be a nuclear war coming up. In fact, there was a Technically, I was told that there was a nuclear warhead that had been launched. Uh, somehow or another, it was uh, brought down, whatever the case may be. That's one intel source that I have. Uh, I asked about the situation where Russian president had ordered the people into bunkers. Uh, I talked to some people over in Russia. One in the know there said to me, that it was actually a cyber attack that took place, and that's what initiated that move to the bunkers, but it wasn't uh, of any real threat at the time there. But something is going to give somewhere along the way a false flag, as if you remember, those of you that watch our Patreon channel, we talked about that, uh, how that there were, uh, 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 there were uh, Ukrainian soldiers, possibly that of even NATO soldiers, that were in a full nuclear hazmat suits on the front lines there uh, uh, near the uh, the Donbass region. And there was great concern in the U.S. that that is a possible false flag event. And only that, we're facing so many other issues here at home uh, that are also a great concern. And, and like, for example, all these derailments that are happening. Why the derailments? I think we talked about that on Patreon recently as well. The reason for these derailments is that contamination of the water supply. If you remember, I've said this for a long time on Patreon and even here on Israeli News Live, stock up on water. I keep hearing from people in D.C., stock up on water because something's going to happen to the water supply in the near future and drinking water is going to be a major issue. Well, the more and more I keep hearing, even with these rail cars, the one that just happened in Alabama, third one for this this particular uh, uh, CSX uh, uh, train uh, derailments here that are happening. But even this one here leaks diesel fuel into the river. Uh, the Ohio uh, spill, contaminating water supply. They claim that there was nothing with the Alabama one there, but who knows? Who knows what's going to be said about that next? You know, insiders are saying that there are plots and plans being done here in the United States. They want to bring down this nation. They're looking at trying to do this by the end of the year. Will, will they be successful? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they really will. But the point is, is they're going to continue to bring about chaos in order to try to bring about their their plans and their goals there. Uh, dropping back real quick to TASS reporting Russian forces wipe out Ukrainian S-300 anti-aircraft missile system in the DPR uh, area there. Uh, also to uh, BBC reporting, of course, Russia firing the hypersonic missiles in a barrage going into uh, Ukraine. Said so this was a major attack and for the first time with so many different types of missiles, Reuters news agency quoted a Ukrainian Air Force spokesperson as saying it was like never before. Uh, their systems really got overwhelmed, confused, etc. There were all kinds of things going on. And be, like I said, because Russia using the hypersonic missiles, I'm very concerned that that may even cause NATO to justify a nuclear weapon against Russian territories, which would certainly bring a retaliation. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Um, thank you. And I want to thank you for supporting the broadcast there. I'll also, I'll be writing to you guys uh, that support the broadcast. I want to thank you personally. So uh, that's my plans this weekend here is to thank you for your kindness. So uh, God bless you. And again, uh, you can see the mailing address, Stephen Benoon, uh, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872, uh, I believe. Our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. 
And um, so, uh, and I, and one thing I, I want to mention too, besides our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, you can donate online right there just by clicking right there. But I want, if you would please be in prayer, uh, as I mentioned to you before, uh, a dear friend of mine is in very, very serious condition after open heart surgery. His family, they need your, your prayers. Uh, I, I just sincerely ask. I know that God is able to do far more than anyone could ever imagine. And eventually I'm going to share a testimony about this case as well. Uh, an amazing thing that took place, and I want to be able to share that with you in the very near future. Uh, I'm actually going to be talking about some of that over on Danoon Institute uh, here in just a little bit. I'll record a video for Danoon Institute, our YouTube channel there. Uh, so I'll try to put the link uh, in this video, at least for the channel. The video won't be up necessarily when you see this. Uh, but, I, but I want to uh, ask for you to, to, to pray about that. Uh, there was another prayer request that I had, and I and it actually slips my mind at the moment here. I apologize, uh, but there was another serious uh, prayer request. Maybe I'll remember it, and I can share it over on Danoon Institute. Thank you for listening, and God bless you, and we'll talk again soon.